Hi everyone, this is the second part of our lesson, lesson two, functional skills writing for different purposes. So again, following on from our previous lesson, we're still thinking about how to inform, advise and persuade. If you haven't done so already, please could you like and subscribe. It really does help us out when you do so. So if we recap what we went over last time then, what we were thinking about was how to understand what is meant by informing, giving advice and persuading. We're going to interpret information effectively and then we're going to apply your understanding to a written example. Look at the three statements and attempt the challenges that follow. So what you're going to do then, you're going to be faced with three different statements and for each one we're going to go through and we're going to try and identify the purpose of each statement. So when we talk about the purpose of each statement, we mean is it meant to inform, persuade or advise? And then for the super challenge, try and select a quotation to justify your ideas. Now, if you're not sure what we mean when we say select a quotation, what we mean by this is where you take an actual part of the text to prove something that you're trying to actually say about the broader message of the text. Then mega challenge, identify any language techniques that you notice. Now, as this is only really part two of our second lesson, we haven't really looked at many language devices or language techniques, but if there are ones that you know already, please feel free to identify them as we go through. Teacher example. Look at the example to work out how to attempt the challenges. So this is actually an example that we had in our very first lesson. So it might seem um, like something you've been through before. Now what we're going to do, we're going to read through it. We're going to think about is the purpose of the writing to inform, persuade or advise. We're going to try and identify a quotation to justify that. And then we're also going to think about any language techniques that might be going on in this actual response. So it says then, all right, mate, I've heard you're thinking about taking a year out and doing some traveling. I get that it sounds really fun, but you need to think about your future, buddy. I understand that you've been working hard. You smashed your A-levels, so who wouldn't want to go a bit crazy? Look, I get it. However, take it from someone who's been around the block a bit. You need to carry on with your studies and leave the holidays and the stupid stuff to when you've finished uni. Now, first of all, the first thing to think about when you're faced with any text is what is the purpose. So when we think about this one, what are they really trying to communicate? Well, we know they're talking about university, they're talking about travel. So what are they really trying to convey through this? So the person they're writing to, we can assume, is thinking about taking some time out and going to do some traveling. And this person actually does present a little bit of a balanced argument. We can see that in the first instance, it is saying that it sounds really fun. So it's given us a positive. And then we've got this contradictory word here with but. So but you need to think about your future. OK, so now we see that it's trying to actually change the tone of the writing a little bit. It's not just giving us information. If anything, now this person's going to give us some information or perhaps even persuade us towards going to around a certain route. So who will want to go a bit crazy? Rhetorical question there. That's another thing we need to think about. So that's one of the language techniques. Look, I get it. However, take it from someone who's been around the block a bit. You need to carry around your studies and leave the holidays and the stupid stuff to when you've finished uni. Now the overall message of this one would be to give advice, but we can see here the actual tone is shifting a little bit as well. When you get to things like saying you need to do this and then saying things are stupid, we're going to get quite a negative impression here as well. So I'd say the overall message this person is trying to convey is that they're trying to give someone advice. Clearly, they know him quite well. And we can see that from the salutations from saying, all right, mate. But they're getting a little bit too aggressive when you're doing advice. Generally, you want to make it quite lighthearted, um, gently nudging them in the right direction. Whereas I think this one isn't quite doing the purpose that it was intended to. So a good quotation to say that we're actually um, trying to give advice is the fact that they're giving some good bits and bad bits. So I get that it sounds really fun, but you need to think about your future might be an appropriate quotation. And then we think about some of the language techniques. Well, there's not been loads, but we do have things like our rhetorical question with who wouldn't want to go a bit crazy. And we also have things like the... Um, bossy verb here of you need to do that or you need to do this so generally speaking um, we don't always call it a bossy verb we also call it an imperative as well this is when you're giving someone an order or a command so that's the first one that's the one that I've went through by myself 
I'm now going to show you two more statements and I'd like to try and go through them by yourself and see if you can figure out first of all what is the purpose of the writing, try and support your ideas with the quotation and then if you can try and identify a few language techniques that have been in each response. Okay so here's the, the next one then. So it says in 2023, the National Finance Agency reported a rise in the cost of holidays by 25% from the previous year. It is believed that due to post-COVID restri restrictions, travel has become harder and often more expensive. Many students feel the need to take a year out, and many employers appreciate applicants that have gone out and gained more life experience. Travelling can be expensive, however. It may be done cheaply if you are savvy with saving. Many students have spread the cost by working abroad, earning some money and enjoying the experience at the same time. So now that we've gone through it then, if you want to pause it and attempt the questions, please feel free to do so. So again, the questions are the same ones that we went through before. You need to try and identify the purpose of each statement. So for this one, are they trying to inform us, persuade us or advise us? Try and actually identify a specific part of the text that shows you that. And then if you can, stretch yourself further and identify any language techniques that have been used in the response. Okay, so now we're moving on to the next statement and we're going to look at the same challenges as we looked at previously. So we're going to be talking about the same topic, but we've got to think, is the actual purpose of the writing the same or is it different? So it says then, travelling can be one of the worst things a young person can do. The media fills their minds with images of sun-drenched beaches and a lifestyle with no worries responsibilities or commitments. While the reality couldn't be further from the truth. The job market is tough, especially for young people. More and more people are graduating and competing for the same jobs. So it's really best to run off into the sun. The answer is no. Don't be fooled by the media. Don't just give in to peer pressure. Wise up now and get a job to start your, your own new career. So again, we need to think about each of the challenges there. So identify the purpose of each statement, select a quote to back up your ideas, and then identify any language techniques that you notice. Now, an interesting thing to note with this as well is that even though we're talking about the same topic, the actual tone has changed quite a bit. So if you're not too sure about the purpose, have a look at those adjectives like we did before in that first lesson. How does that actually convey the kind of message they're given? And what kind of force would the writing have if it was just to give us information, if it was going to advise us, or if it was going to be more persuasive. Initial assessment. So to get an idea of your current writing level, attempt the writing question. So this is just a typical question that we put together to start thinking about what kind of level are you currently at. This is also one that's been designed to actually replicate a lot of the elements that you'd get within the normal writing assessment as well. So it's a really good thing to often come back to and to practice for the future as well. So it says then, your local council have asked you to write about the best places to visit in your local area. Write an article about the best places to visit. In your response, you should write in full sentences, use paragraphs appropriately, use subheadings, use language techniques if you know any, and check your spelling, punctuation and grammar. And it's important to note with this writing task as well, it does indicate in the bottom left hand corner that the examiner is looking for you to write around 200 to 250 words. Now, important thing to note when you do have an actual word count to work with, you don't really need to go through and count every single word that you've produced. Just think about how much that would look on a page. Typically within the writing assessment, we're talking about a page, page and a half at the most, generally speaking. And just use that as a guide as you actually try and produce your writing. Teacher's top tip. So when you're producing something like this, make sure you hand it in to someone. Make sure you email it to someone. For me, for example, you can do that. And actually make sure that you're getting some feedback. It's the most important part of the learning process because if you're not getting feedback on your work, then you're not going to know how you need to improve. You're not going to make it up through the levels. Another thing to think about when you are producing this writing, even if you're just practicing by yourself, don't throw it away. Even if it's just for yourself, you can come back to it later, you can review it and you can see how much progress you've made from now to three to four weeks now down the line. So in terms of our next lesson, these are the kind of things we're going to be focusing on. So we're going to have some feedback from that initial assessment. 
So I'm going to go through some things that would have helped people get a high mark, typical things to avoid, and simple things you can use as well to impress the examiner. We're going to look at some of the key language techniques or devices. They're going to help you with both reading and with writing. And finally, we're going to have a first look at a reading assessment. We're going to go through this as a class, nice and slowly, and just try and get to grips with some of the key questions that will typically come up within the reading assessment. If you need any help or additional support, the new videos will be added every single week. Alternatively, you can leave us a comment below or visit our partner channel, Bookworm Teaching, for more lessons and guidance on all things English. Thanks ever so much for listening, guys, and all the best with your work and revision in the future. Bye-bye.